Welcome back to PSC Secbyte. First of all, I want to remind you to subscribe to this YouTube channel by pressing the red button that you can find in the lower right corner of this screen. That said, today I want to talk with you about the service scope type available in SharePoint Framework. It is really useful whenever you want to rely on the service locator pattern in your SharePoint Framework solutions, especially if you are using a React component or a service class or a service library. In fact, there are plenty of situations when you need to provide the context, the web part context of your SharePoint framework solutions to the React components or to external service libraries or service classes. As well as there are situations where you want to uh, provide the MS Graph client, the SPHTP client, and all these kind of objects to the React components or service libraries and classes. Well, you can clearly do that manually by providing those as properties, for example, in a React component, but you can also rely, rely on the service scope type, which is available in the context of SharePoint framework, and through that one, you can get a unique instance of a type of a service that you will be able to rely on in your code. You simply need to provide the service key of the service that you want to get from the service scope, and you can eventually register and use your own custom services using the same approach. From a code quality point of view and from a manageability and stability point of view, your code will be definitely better than before if you will rely on the service scope. So, like always, let me move to the demo environment and let me show you how to do that in practice. So here you can see a web part that I have built using SharePoint Framework just for the sake of making an example of using the service scope. In this web part, by providing the user principal name of a user, we get the photo picture of the user as a base64 encoded image, and we render that one in an image tag. So you can see here I have my own avatar picture, and I can do the same for any one of my colleagues, like for example, for my colleague Guido. So if I will apply, I will see his picture right here. And this is a base64 picture encoded by an external service. Now, from a code point of view, we have a web part that I've built using SharePoint Framework in the end. And in this web part, I'm relying on a service which I call the iUser service, which simply provides a getBase64 avatar method, which will accept the UPN of the user as an input and will return as a string the Base64 encoding of the picture. How does it work? Well, first of all, this user service requires Microsoft Graph to make a query for the user and to get back the picture and to convert the picture into a Base64 encoded picture. So, here we have the actual implementation of the service. And here you can see we rely in the getBase64 avatar method, we rely on the AAD HTTP client factory object to get a client for Microsoft Graph to make a request for the uh, binary value of a photo of a target user, and then we convert the photo into a Base64 string if we have uh, a positive response from the service. Now, the interesting part of the story is that this service class, this user service class, relies on the AAD HTTP client factory. Generally speaking, when we do that, we can, for example, create an instance of the object, uh, of the AAD HTTP client object, or we can provide an instance of the client factory to the service class library. However, we will have a dependency on that object, as well as if we need to rely on a React component in between, like we have right here, where we have a React component which does the actual rendering of the UI, we would have to provide the uh, web part context or the uh, MS Graph client or AAD HTTP client object to the React component. Instead of doing that, and instead of having an explicit dependency on objects available in SharePoint Framework, we can just rely on the service scope type. Here is how it works. So, first of all, in the context of SharePoint Framework, we have a property called service scope. The service scope is already created inside the context of SharePoint Framework, and eventually you can create your own service scope and service scope child if you want to create your own uh, set of services in memory. Uh, it is an advanced topic which we will not cover right now, maybe eventually in a future uh, PSC Stack Byte video. But right now, we are just focusing on getting an instance of our custom service. So, in our user service, we provide a static public property called service key, 
which will be a string which will represent our service of type user service, which will be seen by the consumers as a service key for the I user service instances. So whenever we will ask to the service scope of the context to consume an instance of this interface providing the specific service key, we will get back a unique instance of that service that we can rely on. And here, for example, in our Yard component, uh, I have uh, in the props uh, a property of type uh, I user service that I provide uh, as the input object uh, to my React component. So that, first of all, in the on init of my web part, uh, I use the service scope to get a unique instance of the user service. Then I provide that instance to my React component without an explicit dependency on the SharePoint framework objects. And then in the React component, I rely on that service to say, give me the avatar, base64 encoded avatar of a specific user based on the UPN, so that I can store that information in the state and I can render the photo of my user if any. As you can see, with this syntax and this approach, my React component is cleaner and more independent from the SharePoint framework context. You can even do more, for example, you can, if you need to uh, rely on multiple services, you can eventually think about providing the service scope itself uh, as an input property to the target React component or the target service library you want to use. Or you can think about using React hooks and using the context of React, React to store the service scope in a unique container shared across all of the React components, just to avoid to provide the service scope across multiple instances of multiple React components. Regardless of your architecture, you can rely on the service scope to easily get a unique instance of a service based on a service key, and then you can use that service. And in that service, when you will need to access the services provided by SharePoint Framework in its service scope, you will simply need to provide a constructor which will accept the service scope type instance as an input argument and by subscribing to the when finished uh, uh, event which will be triggered when the service scope is completely built and all of the services will be registered you can then say to the service scope that you want to consume a specific service like for example here the AD HTTP client factory which already provides its own service key in order to support this uh, uh, behavior there are plenty of services available in SharePoint Framework which provide their own service key, and you can easily get a unique instance of them using the service scope. What is important to remember is that you should and you uh, have to get the instances of the services when the service scope is ready, so when finished is triggered. You shouldn't do that before the service scope is completely initialized and configured. And that's why in the constructor we subscribe to the when finished event and when it will happen, we get our instance of the ADHTP client factory. Once we have done that, we store the ADHTP client factory in a private member in our service class and we use it whenever we need it. It is really, really, really powerful and allows you to create a cleaner architecture for your solutions. Like always, thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and I'm really looking forward to seeing you next week. Thank you.